Hi, uh, I'm Shotaro Sano from Prefund Networks. Uh, today, I'm happy to introduce our new hyperparameter optimization library called Optune. Uh, in this presentation, I will describe the basic usage of Optune, as well as design philosophy of the li library. A hyperparameter controls the behavior of machine learning algorithms and models. It's not automatically obtained by machine learning, but set manually by human. And the choice of hyperparameter is critical for machine learning. Um, for example, those pictures are the results of object detection model. A right is the result of appropriate hyperparameter, and the left is with bad hyperparameter. So without appropriate setting, the detection model counts the duplicated object again and again. So to avoid this kind of problem, we need to optimize hyperparameter, which is a critical process in machine learning. To optimize hyperparameters, people just repeat com uh, coming up with some hyperparameter and evaluate the hyperparameter, just training and evaluating the model. People just repeat this cycle for every few hours or even days, which loves a lot of time and creativity of humans. And Optuna automate this process. So this is agenda. I will describe the basic usage and design philosophy, and we'll also describe some real world application of this library. First of all, uh, you can install the library with pip install of Tuner. And there are very few dependencies, so you can immediately install of Tuner. And of Tuner is platform agnostic, so you can use of Tuner with any kind of machine learning libraries, including TensorFlow, PyTorch, or Scikit-Learn. And this is the basic usage of of Tuner. Uh, you just uh, fill in this template with your machine learning logic and specify the number of iterations. Okay, so before looking at machine learning example, let's see a very simple optimization problem where we have a quadratic function of x minus two square. And here the hyperparameter is x and we want to minimize the output of, of this function. And we know that the answer is obviously x equal to two, but Optuna does not know how to solve this problem. Optuna just knows what is called Bayesian optimization, uh, which is the uh, internal algo of this, of this library. So let's see how Optuna solves this problem. And this is a script to optimize a quadratic function. Um, first, you need to define the objective function uh, Optuna execute this function again and again during the optimization, uh, trying different hyperparameters. And here hyperparameter is x, and you can get the value of hyperparameter inside the objective function with what is called suggest method, which literally suggests hyperparameter to be tried next. And here we are setting the range of hyperparameter between minus 100 to 100. And after getting the value of x, we can calculate the objective value and return the value from the function. And to optimize the task, uh, you need to instantiate the study object, uh, which manages the optimization process. And invoke study.optimize to start the optimization, uh, passing the objective function and the number of iterations. So executing this script, uh, you can see the log like this, uh, which includes the uh, um, result of uh, objective value. And this slide visualizes the optimization process uh, where the horizontal axis shows trial count and the vertical one shows objective value. So at first, Optuna broadly explores the search space and it gradually converges near the optimal point. Okay, so next, um, 
let's see a um, machine learning example with common problem in neural network where we want to optimize the number of layers and the number of units for each layer in multi-layer perceptron. So let's optimize this using Optune. And this is the machine learning logic uh, with scikit-learn library. Uh, currently, we haven't applied hyperparameter optimization. Uh, so currently, this script just does downloading the MNIST data and splits the data into training one and evaluation one, trains the, mo trains the model, and evaluates the model uh, with evaluation data, and outputs the evaluation score. And I will modify this to apply Optune. So basically, you just need to surround the machine learning logic with a function and replace the target parameters with suggest method. Here, uh, Optuna suggests the number of layers, and after that, it suggests the number of units for each layer using for loop. And here, the uh, number of layers is between one to four, and number of units is between um, one to 128 and calculate the score and return the score from objective function. And invoke study dot optimize, passing the function and the number of trials. And this is a script I just wrote and all you need is to write this kind of script for your machine learning model. So in summary, uh, to use Optuna, define the objective function and get the hyperparameter with suggest method and run the search with study.optimize. Uh, by the way, Optuna provides very easy mechanism to distribute the optimization. So if you have multiple machines, you can just simultaneously run multiple trials. And it can be asynchronous and it, it shows near linear scalability. And to set up distributed optimization, uh, you just need to change two lines of your code. So let's see an example. Um, so to distribute the optimization, uh, you need to put the name of the optimization experiment and the URL of the central database. Put those information to the script. And after putting those information, just run your script from multiple processes or machines. And just by doing this, workers automatically share the history of optimization and run a distributed optimization based on the history. Currently, Optuna you know, um, shares the history among six processes. So that's all about the basic usage of Optuna. Um, a tutorial is available here, so you can follow uh, what I described so far using Jupyter Notebook. So if you have a laptop machine with you, uh, please try this tutorial. And using the rest of this presentation, I will describe the design philosophy of the library, uh, starting with imperative interface. Uh, Optuna equips what is called imperative interface. Um, it actually reduces the amount of your code. An imperative interface is inspired by modern deep learning libraries such as TensorFlow, PyTorch, or Chainer. The interface allows the full extent of the host language, means you can use Python syntax to configure the optimization. So let's see an example. Um, this is the Optuna code example I just you know, uh, showed you in the former part of this presentation. So this is Optuna, and this is the, exactly the same logic using the existing library called Hyperopt. So in Optuna, the search space definition, I um, mean getting a hyperparameter, happens inside, inside the objective function. And in existing libraries, such space setup happens outside the objective function. 
And another difference is the existing library uh, needs Python dictionary to define the search space. And Optuna can use any Python syntax to set up search space. So it's not only for Hyperopt, but almost all of existing frameworks. And it's actually hard to describe a complicated search space just with a dictionary, uh, which is, you know, small and restricted subset of Python syntax. And as a result, uh, with Optuna, you can reduce the amount of your code as well as intuitively write down your optimization setup. And next, I will describe the optimization algorithm. So this is an overview of Optuna's optimization algorithms. There are actually two components of sampling strategy and pruning strategy. A sampling strategy is how to uh, decide the next configuration using previous search history, uh, which is represented by Bayesian optimization. And pruning strategy is, it's like by looking at intermediate learning curve, we can detect unpromising trials and just stop unpromising trials in the middle of the training. So pruning is early stopping of underperforming trials. And talking about uh, uh, sampling strategy. Um, so sampling strategy means how to decide the next hyperparameter. And there are many famous methods to solve this kind of problem. And we found that combining different types of basic methods shows outstanding performance. For example, we combined what is called 3 percent estimator, uh, which is a variant of Bayesian optimization. And it's also based on Hyperopt. And we also combine this with what is called CMAES, which is a kind of genetic algorithm. And this combination outperforms the existing libraries on the black box optimization benchmark. Uh, that is much better than Hyperopt and SMAC, uh, which are very famous hyperparameter optimization framework. And other than this method, uh, you can use many kind of sampling methods, including Gaussian process, simulated annealing, or grid search. Or you can also define your own sampling algorithm. And ne next, let me describe another optimization component of pruning. So it automatically stops unpromising trials by looking at intermediate learning curve. And so we found that what is called successive halving shows um, outstanding performance in pruning. Um, I will skip the detail of this algorithm, but it's based on bandit theory. And um, actually, you know, our benchmark shows that successive halving makes your optimization almost twice as fast. So just turning on this feature, you can make your optimization much, much faster. And next, let me describe our, um, our versatile architecture of the library. So here the motivation is hyperparameter optimization happens in a variety of scenarios. For example, uh, sometimes you want to optimize your model just inside your notebook, just in you know, Jupyter Notebook. So it's experiment, experimental purpose. And sometimes you need to uh, do it in production environment with much more complicated pipeline. And sometimes we want to distribute the optimization among dozens of workers. And we also need to analyze the optimization results. So our motivation is to cover all of those scenarios. And to deal with variety of situations, we came up with three requirements of lightweight, scalable, and visualizable. A lightweight means minimum dependencies both in terms of software and infrastructure. Optuna just uh, requires very small number of Python libraries, uh, which allows minimum software dependency. And in terms of infrastructure, uh, it has almost no infrastructure dependency because Optuna itself is self-contained by a single Python process. 
And this slide shows the system flow of Optuna uh, to deal with distributed optimization. Um, so during distributed optimization, all communication among workers happen in the uh, backend storage, uh, means uh, RDB. And users can change the backend storage according to their need. Uh, by default, it's just in-memory storage to be a standalone process for the uh, library. And uh, you also uh, can use server-based DB for performance. And so this architecture is actually very simple. And because it's simple, it realizes minimum infrastructure dependency and realizes scalable optimization. And optimization history can be exported to Pandas data frame, uh, which is a powerful library for visualization and analysis. I think as you know. And, um, and dashboard that consolidates uh, typical analysis scenarios, including optimization curve and parallel coordinates. Okay, so in summary, Optuna is intuitive, efficient, and versatile. Intuitive because of its imperative interface and efficient because of both sampling and pruning strategies. And versatile because of the architecture to simultaneously realize lightweight, scalable, and visualizable design. Okay, so finally, let me introduce um, some successful application of Optuna. Um, first, Optuna greatly contributed to our solution in Open Images Challenge, uh, which is a cargo competition held last year. Uh, this is competition for object detection. And we won the second prize uh, in the competition with uh, our faster RCNN solution, where we have a huge number of hyperparameters to be optimized. And especially optimizing some thresholds of post-processing method substantially improved the uh, detection score. And this library also works for non-machine learning applications. For example, you can optimize the execution speed or memory usage of, of, of your web servers. And in our use case, we tried the library for high-performance computing application uh, called Limpack Benchmark. Uh, so th there are a lot of parameters uh, to be optimized in Limpack. And so, so the point is, as long as you can define the objective function, you can apply Optuna for any kind of application. That is, you just need to invoke shell command inside the objective function using built-in Python APIs and just get the performance uh, from the command. Okay, finally, um, Optuna is active open source software, uh, so please go to pfnet Optuna, and we are looking forward to any feedback to realize efficient and user-friendly auto ML library. Um, any question is welcome, but um, I'm actually you know, still developing my English, especially for listening, so you can also reach out to me uh, via Slack, Twitter, or offline talking is welcomed. Uh, where I'll reply with much higher accuracy. Of course, <laughs> this QA session is welcomed. So that's all of my presentation. Thank you. Question? Yeah. Can you explain that? Oh, this is such space. Okay. Let's go back. I think, okay, moment. Yeah, I think this is, oh, you know, um, the meaning of nested is, you know, uh, here uh, we have the number of layers and number of units for each layer. And uh, the number of each layer uh, is, you know, kind of a conditional variable for the number of layers. Yeah, and uh, you know, some variable does not appear in the space. Okay. Makes sense. Yeah. 
Oh, yeah, uh, we are going to, uh, you know, uh, have a poster presentation in KDD and we'll, you know, make public soon. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Um, sorry, that, that came out convoluted. Uh, <laughs> let me try to rephrase this. Um, oh. If you, if you want to run it on multiple GPUs on, on one machine, uh, does that do you treat that the same as across multiple different machines, or is there a special logic for different cases? Uh, so, so your question is uh, whether it can, you know, deal with. Uh, multiple GPU inside the inside one machine or it can scale to the multiple machines? Uh, about, yeah. Okay, uh, yeah. Um, so, you know, um, so uh, answering this question, um, this can do, you know, even if the uh, GPU is spread to multiple machines. So probably we can discuss offline as well. So this slide, this is an example of training the two hyperparameters, or training two hyperparameters at once. If you wanted to train even more than that, would you still have had to do like additional correlates? Oh uh, yeah, uh, so yeah, he, he, here we only have two hyperparameters. Uh, actually, there are not two. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, so example, um, I, I don't have in this slide, but you know, for example, uh, you can add uh, some uh, optimizer to add here, or you can also switch the, uh, you know, the classifier mo model. So if you... So you have that ability though, to do multiple analysis. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So you are mentioning about the correlation between the hyperparameters. Okay. Uh, so um, in default setting, uh, we, we are using TPE for default. TPE just cares about the, you know um, don't, don't care the correlation. But uh, we also you know provide Gaussian process backend, and we uh, if you use uh, Gaussian process or some other kind of uh, backend sampler, you can do that. Uh, so, so, uh, yeah, um, let's talk offline. Uh, yeah, um, we're actually considering, but um, so far uh, it doesn't support much objective function. I said, sorry, say again. Uh, yeah, um, so, uh, okay, for, especially for TPE, 
um, you can um, set the, some hyper hyper parameter for TP and uh, Gaussian process as well. So yeah, probably uh, you can set what you want. <laughs> and, 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 sorry, sorry. That was a compliment, I think. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh, yeah, uh, so this is just, you know, uh, for demonstration, so you can just uh, prop it outside the objective function. It should be, you know, uh, good. Okay, thank you. Thank you.